So today I'm going to tell you a story of transformation. This is me at A0. <laughs> I didn't look very interesting, but in a very short time, I went through a complete transformation and turned into what morphological form I have, legs and hands, and actually functional. Everything that we know about developmental biology and developmental diseases, including human diseases, has been found by actually looking at embryos transforming. When people see these images, they use words like flow of form and push and pull of forces. This is called embryonic development. But today, I'm going to tell you about a process that I think is far more exciting than embryonic development itself. This is post-embryonic development, when an organism transforms themselves by completely dissolving all its tissue and turns into a different morphological form, still being alive. So we've been studying this process for a fairly long while, and nobody has ever actually seen this in real time. As a surprise, even though metamorphosis seems to be a very delicate process, 80% of all insect species show complete metamorphosis. So you would ask, why? It turns out, in the language of evolution, metamorphoses allow juveniles to not compete with their adults. Remember, caterpillars feed on leaves, and butterflies fly around. It's even more remarkable. Evolution can actually act on the larval form and the adult form in a completely independent manner. So you might sometimes run into a caterpillar that looks completely different, so two different caterpillars, but the adult form look almost indistinguishable. I find these structures enigmatic. You can walk into a museum and you will never see pupil structures because they're harder to collect and they're actually transient in time. I want to imagine how would you actually transform such a form and the only way to do this was to be able to peer inside. If you look inside, statically, by cutting them open, you notice the architecture is completely different. So when you have a hard problem, you look at this wise man, and he said uh, something which I find really funny. It is very easy to answer many of these fundamental biological questions. You just look at the damn thing. And so that's what we did. We figured out a way to build soft X-ray microscopes that can actually visualize inside these tissue structures. And this was an accidental discovery for me. This is a jittery view, but I wanted to show this movie because this was the very first time I had a moment of discovery. So I'll share that with you. Bear with me. Watch right in the center somewhere there. This is a fly larva developing. And right there, something happened. Do you see a big, giant white circle? That's a gas bubble. That's a gas bubble that nucleates inside this pupil structure. So I thought, huh, you know, this is late night. I should go back, look at it tomorrow. It turns out all species of flies that we actually look at have these gas bubbles. They appear exactly at the same place and exactly at the same time, which is quite puzzling. So you see the three images of different sizes of pupil structures, because insects come in many different sizes, and you still get a very similar phenomena happening. Here is a three-dimensional rendering of something like that, and it turns out these gas bubbles are vast. They're almost 50% of the mass of the insect itself. And what we're trying to prove is this is a physical mechanism of actually polymorphism in insects, such that you could control your size. Uh, so here is the movie that took me the longest to make. Uh, it took 16 hours, and watch the guy right up on the top. So this is live transformation of fruit fly pupa actually turning in from a larval form to an adult form that's on the right. Uh, what's really remarkable about these formations is the fact that physics plays a very critical role in orchestrating and synchronizing many of these processes. So when you think about this cavitation, um, I want to do a very quick demo. How many of you have cracked your knuckles before? Can you do one quick crack for me? You heard that sound? That's a cavitation bubble right in your knuckles. It's actually when you pull the joints, you generate negative pressure in the joint itself, and thus 
the dissolved gases actually nucleate. And that's a very similar phenomena that we actually observe in metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a very difficult time because water is being lost from the shell, and you have a shell structure that's completely static. So a negative pressure develops, and most of the tissue actually develops in this negative pressure. And for it to crush itself, uh, it has a strategy, and the strategy is to nucleate a bubble. So I'm going to leave you with this one final thought. Um, I call this the symphony of life. If you think of life as a symphony which is played by many different thousands of biological components, it actually turns out that to synchronize many of these uh, or biological components, physics actually happens to be the conductor for this orchestra. Thank you very much.